Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Movie Strange. Movie Strange is a video podcast where I am cult curious, and I bring my two best friends, Uncle Al and Drew, who are so. not cult curious, they are cult experts. And the premise of the show is, that I, take, I pick a movie that these guys give me, each one of them gives, gives me four words that describes the film, I pick my film based on one of those set of four words. And... They're, they're both, uh, Drew is kind of mainstream cult, Al is extreme stream cult, and I get to watch these films and comment on them, and they're films I would never normally watch, um, and it's been pretty interesting. So, here are the four words from last week, Calvinist, SoCal, Pilgrimage Rescue, Subway Butcher, Hammer, Flesh, and of course, the one I picked was Subway Butcher, Hammer, Flesh. <laughs> <laughs> and this, I think, was Drew. Well, they were both Drews, actually, because Drew, we gave him kind of a participation award because I picked Uncle Al's No, no, Al's that movies. was last time. That was last time. Oh, this is not. Okay, so this is yeah, one of these ones for us, too. I'm sorry. Sorry, movie. Drew. I didn't mean to disparage you That's on okay. that. That's okay. But anyway, so, <laughs> Drew, this, this was your film, Drew. What is the film that I picked? The film is called The Midnight Meat Train. Oh, wait, uh, I know wait. you You see that title, you go, what could that possibly be about? <laughs> um, it's about a train that is full of meat, uh, like in the middle of the night, basically. I so, think this, this description of this film is probably the most descriptive title I've ever seen on any film, basically. It, it's I mean, it is, what you, is what you get. That's true. It is what it is. Why don't you describe it a little bit? Give us a little uh, description, and then we'll talk okay. about it. So, um, I'll talk about the, the short story a little bit later, but it's based on a short story by Clive Barker called The Night Meat Train. And in the movie, you meet um, a young, uh, the year before the hangover, Bradley Cooper, who plays a photographer who's trying to take um, pictures to, to sell to galleries run by Brooke Shields. And um, he discovers that there's this guy who's caught his attention, who seems mysterious, maybe a little dangerous. He starts following him, and this guy that he follows may be connected to these terrible uh, rash of disappearances that are happening in the city, which is basically New York City. They don't really specifically identify it. They shot it in L.A., but it's that sort of almost stereotypical urban New York City environment. I think they were pretty explicit that it was New York City. Oh, were I they? I think so. I think that even the train station, 14th Street... I don't know. It said no. 14th and Beale. And, and, and that, Brooke Shields was all about, listen, I like New York, but I want to see the gritty New York. I think they're pretty explicit. Oh, you maybe, know, you're maybe, right. Maybe you're I'm right. wrong, but okay. The, uh, no, I think the, that's the, right. That subway station reminded me of the one next to your uh, ex-wife's house. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the newly designed yeah. subway station there at uh, the Upper East Side, right? That yeah. one. Definitely okay. looked like that. So I have a, I have a trailer. Yeah, do you want to keep describing or watch the trailer first? No, or? Let's, do, let's do a trailer. Like you said, the, the title is most of the description already. So. <laughs> and I think, I think your description was pretty good, too. Okay. No. <laughs> These represent missing people for the last three years. The only way to make it stop. I follow them into the subway. He butchers them like cattle. <laughs> They never find the remains because he unloads the meat somewhere. Is to go for the ride. I got a train to catch. Yeah. <laughs> You, you know a movie's good when uh, Ted Raimi shows up for five seconds. And Ted Raimi gets murdered. his head. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Take it off. Okay. Also, so you was that Don Juan Fontaine? Uh, I'm sorry. What was that? Wait, was that Don? Uh, what, what's his name? Don La Fontaine. The I think he might be. Yeah, like the classic it. movie voice. That's yeah. That's old enough. It could have like been. It. Yeah. You said that was the trailer for the home video release. That's what it looked and, like. The Blu-ray um, DVD. Part of the story of the movie is that it. That's almost the only release that it got. It was a Lionsgate movie. Uh, it ended up only going out in 200 theaters. Clive Barker was very angry about it. He said that he was really proud of the movie because he was involved in the production and that uh, he was very disappointed that the um, he accused, he basically accused uh, the studio of saying, uh, of pushing the movies, other movies like The Strangers and sidelining his movie so that they would get more marketing for The Strangers, which is also an excellent, nasty film. But I think this is definitely one of those movies. It played at some festivals and some horror festivals, but it really found its audience uh, at home. And I, I don't think it suffers for that. I mean, it's it's a good, you know, watch it in your living room type of movie. 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I remember when it came out. I think I think it came out on HBO. I don't know some streaming service. I definitely didn't see it in the movie theater. Watching yeah. it again, I, I realize it's about an hour and a half too long. They could have done this thing in twenty minutes. <clears throat> it could have been. It could have been a Twilight Zone type type episode. You know, wrap it up. And <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of gore in this. I'm not. You know, when I watch these cult films. This kind well, of this gore. This is what you're waiting for, wasn't it? You're waiting for over the top gore because we haven't really had one of those. Like I was just going to say, except that this is kind of CGI gore. There's a lot right. of fake blood. You know, a lot of blood on the subway floor. Um, the only thing, the only scene that I squirmed in is when he's taking the teeth out and the fingernails. At one right. point, he's, and you know, this is an allegory, right? For 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 cattle cattle murdering and 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 meat eaters versus non meat eaters, right? I mean. I mean that's that's built into the script. He's a vegetarian right. until he yeah. isn't, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you know the meat that the, the the subway driver comes out. Uh, Please step away from the meat. At the, at the end <laughs> right, of the film, right. Um, it's it just it, it's it's like I said. It should have been twenty minutes, twenty five minutes long. And 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 the spiral that that Bradley takes. By the way, this is pre Hangover, so this is yeah, right before, before he. Yeah, this is right mm -hmm. before he he was already in Wedding Crashers and a bunch of other small roles. Then he exploded a year later. Um, I just felt like, and, and the typical blonde girlfriend, you know, who's running down hallways, f f tripping over her shoes and all that stuff. Some of the some of the tropes were all there. It's it just I, I liked it. I didn't love it. It's kind of the gore is. Uh, Al, do you think there's a lot of gore in this? I mean, there's a lot of blood, but do you find it like yeah, gory? There's a decent amount of gore in this. I mean, you 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 left out the whole like scooping the eyes out and uh, you know hanging people by their Achilles tendons. With that, well, that was pretty rough. The scene, yeah, where the, the Achilles is getting pulled out, people yanking on hammer, the body, hammer smashed faces. And well, and they also do blood. that POV of the woman getting her head lopped off, and you, right. you see her head roll, yeah. and the last thing she sees is her own body twitching. <laughs> twitching while he's cutting her up the middle, whatever he was doing. Uh, and Vin, Vin, Vinnie Jones plays the first meet. I mean, I, I guess we can spoil it. Can we spoil it? It's been out since 2008. Can we explain? I think we can spoil it. Because, it, you know, it definitely, I knew right at the beginning. Yeah, spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear anything, now's the time to get off. Come back later. Um, <laughs> I mean, I knew it was Bradley Cooper right at that first, that very first scene. Oh, you, you mean see, the way that, you, that it was going to end? Where you see the old, the bald guy wake up in the subway, and he's the first one that slips in the blood, and then he looks in, and as somebody, you know, obviously it's Leon. His name was Leon in the film. Um, I just want a couple of things I want to bring up. Wait, what are you, are you saying that the are you saying that the opening scene is a flash forward? It is definitely a flash forward because and you I see that yeah. same bald you see that same bald guy sleeping on the train right at the right. End, last. That's scene. Bradley Cooper's first night. That's Leon's first night. Yeah. Okay. As I, the, think, I think that's, as mahogany. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair read. I didn't think about that, and then I noticed the guy. This viewing, I've seen it a couple times. This this, uh, this viewing, I noticed that bald guy sleeping, and I was like, "Oh, I thought we already killed him." And then I realized, yeah, that was a flash forward to when Leon finally gets becomes the. They rip his tongue oh, out. I totally and he becomes, didn't pick up on that. Oh, um, well, there you go. Fresh eyes. You know what I'm saying? Fresh, clean Fresh eyes. eyes. Fresh eyes. out one more time. Yeah. A couple of things. Okay. There's a scene where he's having rough sex with his girlfriend at the diner. Right. Yes. Yeah, she, and then, she did not seem to be into that. No, not at all. And then they yeah. immediately cut to the train tunnel. Right? Yeah. <laughs> next, next shot the train tunnel. And the other I trope. It's like North by Northwest, you know. Right. <laughs> exactly. And the other trope I hate, and there's nothing I can do about it. You know, there's microfiche scenes in every film now, practically. We've seen a couple yeah, films now. With, there and are there are a lot. Yeah. The reflection back. Of the microfiche on eyes, for some yeah. reason that just completely takes me out of the movie. I don't know. I like that. you'd be you'd be blinking. You'd be like, "Wait, I can't look. At, I can't even see the microfiche because I get it's an artistic choice." <laughs> it's in my eyes. Yeah, it's like, I know. Uncle Al's right. It's a, it's a stylistic. Decision. I know. Okay, but I don't like that. That's the reason for it. I don't That's like it. Funny. Um, well, you know, you have to see more microfiche in movies now because <laughs> the problem is if you if you write a lot of movies that have come out in the past, I don't know, seventy years, they don't work today if you have a cell phone. So right. you have to go totally. back in time to when there are less cell phones. Wow, well, Arlington cell Road, he went and looked at microfiche in Arlington Road. I don't know when that one came right. up, but same thing. You that go back. Uh, 99. Right. So, yeah, you couldn't see. Yeah, cell phones would kill every movie. Now, movies would be over in five seconds with the cell phone. Um, I, I just, and the blood, you know, I, I could, 
like I said, the, the CGI blood is kind of what... No, I don't really want to see their heads get lopped off, right? When he... They, they cut away enough where you know what's going on, but he doesn't show it, thankfully. Well, did, you watch, did you watch the unrated... I, I watched cut? the streaming version. I have no idea. See, uh, on Amazon? On? Prime, yeah. Yeah, see, it's confusing to me because the movie is supposed to be an hour and 37 minutes for the R-rated cut, and then an extra six minutes or so, an hour and 42 minutes for the unrated. unrated director cut. I have it on Blu-ray, but I looked at the the two versions. There's actually two versions on um, Amazon, and there's the one that's listed as the Prime included one, and that's an hour and 42 minutes. And then the one that you can rent or buy is an hour and 37 minutes, but neither of them are labeled one way or the other, except the longer cut is rated R. And they're not terribly different. It's like an extra second of gore here or there, and sometimes the extra gore is more CGI blood spatter, which... I, generally, that was disappointing to me too. I mean, I think I, a I lot mean, of the blood in the movie is good. The the, the practical blood, it's fine. It it's, it's, yeah. it fills the car, and then there's splatters and eyeballs and all that stuff with CGI. It takes me out a little bit. It takes well, me out that, a little bit. That one girl. I, I think the CGI was better here than it was in uh, Wormwood, but I mean, obviously, well, this had a lot bigger budget too. So. Yeah, it's, it's four years later and a lot more money. Not a lot of money. But a lot more money. So yeah, no, I mean that that's part of it. But you you have definitely seen movies that came out in the past couple of years that had the most expensive CGI behind it, and it just some of it worked, some of it didn't work. You know. Well, that was there was there was not real blood, but there was actual wet stuff on the subway floor when those actors are yeah. crawling around and that stuff. It's when they, it's the it's the scenes where it's point of view where the hammer hits and you see the blood hit the hit the screen, right? That's all the CGI stuff, right? They're they're well, it's not. Funny. It's funny that you bring that up because it's actually, I, I still like the movie. It wasn't like a Spitfire Grill situation, but um, I, you mean, the you mean was, by that you mean? Let's explain what you mean. You saw it once and change your mind when you saw it again. You're, you're sticking with it, is what you're saying. Not only did I see it again, I saw it again twelve years later. Right. And I still thought. I mean, I, I enjoy it. I think it's good. I'll talk about why I think it's good in a minute. But the digital blood is much worse than I remember. It didn't ruin the movie for me or anything, but. I guess that part of the two, the first decade of the 21st century, there was a lot of that. And I remember there was an overuse of those types of effects in the movie Drag Me to Hell. Did you ever see oh, that? I, Sam did. Movie? I actually like that one. Yeah. It's, it's a fun movie, but yeah. it's PG-13. So there's not a lot of blood, but right. there's a lot of gross stuff in CGI. And I remember quite vividly, I, we liked the film, my wife and I saw it together. But at one point, some like witch is throwing up in her the hero's mouth or something, and this guy in the audience goes, "God damn, how many times we're we gonna see her spit stuff in and out of her mouth?" And we all were just like, "That's a really good question, a really good question." <laughs> but yeah, so that was that 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 took me that took me out of it a little bit. But it, it's also I mean, it's supposed to be an extreme, almost like Grand Guignol crazy type of thing. I, I don't look at this movie. I, I go, that looks like corpses hung by ankles. I couldn't tell you if the butchering is proper, right. you know, but I, who cares? Well, I mean, like I said, the title describes exactly what the movie is, right? It's right. just a train with people hanging like meat. I mean, it's, it's right. Al, where is this on your scale of, you know, cause you're, you're extreme. As I've said, is I mean, this, it, does this it, seem mainstream to you? Or is this like one of your, this is like a cult? I think this is just like dipping its toes into like extreme. I don't know. I I don't know what the theatrical cut is like, but I for me this this movie was okay. I saw it once a long time ago and honestly I don't I didn't until I watched it the other night I didn't remember anything about it except a little bit about the end which we haven't really got into. But um like I I like the gag where he hits her head off and she's like still seeing her body like right. No, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they talk about that in like the you know during the French Revolution, like theoretically the human head could still have about eight seconds unless it's separated from the body. So yeah, about eight I seconds. Kind, I, I, enjoyed I mean, I've, I hope I never know that, but I heard it's about eight seconds. Yeah, I mean that's but you like you said it's gag, right? It's a gag. Yeah, a lot right. of the stuff he was doing was gags. The stuff in the apartment. Now the other thing is the dumb moves they make with a girlfriend and the her his his um. The guy who sponsors him to get the the gallery, they go into this guy's right. house in the middle of the night. I mean, just dumb, just like stupid things. But that's well, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of it is horror. dumb horror movie right. character decision stuff. Yeah, right. <clears throat> I mean, it's not a good cast. I really like Roger Bart. He plays that guy you're talking about, Jergens. Yeah. I like Vinnie Jones. I like Bradley Cooper. Yeah, Vinnie um, Jones was you know, very 
you know, doesn't say a word till the last his last word. Welcome. Yeah. I think he says welcome or something. He says welcome. Yeah. Right. And Tony, um, what's his name? Tony Curran. He plays the uh, the driver of the train. The train driver. Yeah, he's he's great. He's in a lot of stuff. It's funny because I like actors when I can think of them in roles because I remember him from this movie. We'll talk about the ending in a second. I remember him from the ending of this movie, and it's very dark and upsetting, and he's very cruel and evil. But then in Doctor Who, he played Vincent Van Gogh in this really oh, that's marvelous. The same guy. <laughs> yeah, that's Tony Curry. And it's a really marvelous episode where Vincent Van Gogh actually gets to be brought for a few minutes to the future and see what his legacy was as an artist. And I mean, it's just beautiful and warm and wonderful. And I just, I don't know, I like seeing people that really can sell me on the full spectrum of, of their performances. And, you know, this movie is very extreme. I did not go into it first time, you know, expecting anything subtle or anything like that. But, oh, it's not subtle. Let's but, talk about the ending. You guys keep, both of you keep saying, let's talk about the ending as if. Well, that's going to make the movie. I, what's why do you keep wanting to bring up the ending so badly? Well, I want to bring it up because you said um, you said you 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 saw Bradley Cooper. You saw the ending at the beginning. Yeah, I didn't I didn't pick up on that at all. What I saw was the, my experience of the movie, and I, and I still had this experience when I watched this again. You know, I don't think this is the world's best movie or storytelling or anything. But what the, surprised me and made me happy about the movie the first time I saw it is that it really does have more of a story than I expected. I did not know where it was going to go. I forgot that it was Clive Barker. So at the end, when suddenly there are real monsters eating human flesh and you know they have to get a new butcher to serve them and all that, I did not see that coming. And I, I thought, wow, this is, this is just, you know, there's just more of a story to it than I expected. Like you said, it could have been shorter. There's a lot of well, uh, there's I, a I lot think... of uh, fat that could be trimmed, but I, I, I dug the ending, and I didn't expect well, to. Well, they, to... you know, they keep going to the diner with his buddy who owns the diner. Suddenly, Bradley Cooper is eating meat because he, the first scene he goes to the diner, he gives the guy tofu, and the right. guy's like, "I can't put tofu on this grill. My grandfather would kill me if I had to." You know, it's like that kind of right. stuff, which I get is right. just trying to. Yeah. What, what I think, I, I think what you want is you want to read the short story because that's basically the last fifteen minutes of the movie. Like all That's the other was stuff say. was invented for the movie, and you really, if you really just want the good stuff, then just read the short story. So the last fifteen minutes is the, you discover that it's, it's monsters that have to eat. That if they don't, they'll come up and well, kill it, everybody. It, it's the well, whole thing. Leon wakes up on the train, and then he he it's it's just him on the train with the butcher, and the end. There's no girlfriend. There's no photography. There's see, no. See, that would probably be a better movie. I mean, it wouldn't be a movie. It'd be a twenty minute segment. Well. But there are, I mean, there are some big differences between the the story, which is the ending of the movie, like Uncle Al said. But the the I'm looking at my notes here. the The big reveal is that, and it wasn't apparently a reveal to you, but the big reveal is that, you know, there are monsters that are eating the humans, and the the story kind of shows that hand really early, and it's written. Like right out of the gate, the story is written from the perspective of, of a character that's essentially going to be the Leon type character and also from Mahogany's perspective. So, you know, and he talks in the story and stuff like he's a man who is proud of his job that he can't tell anyone, all this kind of stuff. And um, the the he thinks about like right like literally on the first couple of pages, he thinks about the responsibility of serving things that are older than humans, stuff like that. And when you get to where the monsters are, which is the same, you know, you get on the train, the train stops, it's dark, it's creepy. The creatures are like really old people monsters and they talk and they um, they have a whole uh, story about serving their leader, which is like this big Lovecraftian thing, all this kind of stuff. The whole notion that we've got to feed them so they stay down there, which I think is cool. That comes through way more in the movie than in the story, because in the oh. movie, in, in the story, they're really like, we have to survive. Uh, you, you have to, we have to be fed or we'll die. And it's almost like their their leader, which literally is described. Right. What happens if they the die? Is a monster like Lovecraft monster. But if those well, monsters die, die, what happens? He gets, his, he gets his tongue ripped out, and he yeah. becomes the the new butcher. Well, but the butcher I, I was think... actually the first butcher was actually a butcher, right? Does now Bradley right. Cooper become a butcher? Does he yes, go? Okay. He's not a photographer anymore. He's now a butcher. Okay. Well, he's Literally not a goes photographer in, in the in the in the short story. He's just some office worker, and he. They, no, but I understand. But once he gets his tongue ripped out, and he becomes no, mahogany, he, and he gets the ring, does, does he he's now right. work at the butcher shop? Yes. Well, oh. 
I mean, Maybe. this is well, like, I mean, well, the other thing I, I got think is that part okay. Necessarily matters. It's just that he's going to ride the train at two a.m. and butcher people to serve right. the Lovecraftian now, god the, in the tunnel. The other implication was this is not the only city this happens in. That there's a whole network of this. Well, that's in that's what city. I was going to say. And the cop yeah. with the necklace, the woman, the female mm -hmm. cop, who mm -hmm. had the same necklace as the ring, she's right. part of the she's part of whatever the conspiracy is, whatever the. They made a deal with these guys to do this, so they. Well, yeah. the The thing that Tony Curran, that the, I don't know if you call him the driver, the conductor, the train man, whatever, but he's he actually has a line about um, keeping the balance, yeah. which is not how I read a, a part that part of the story, and that really reminded me of one of my absolute favorite movies, which is uh, Cabin in the Woods. That's gonna. I mean, that's exactly what I yeah, was thinking. The, the idea that we have to strike a deal something older and more terrible than us in order to essentially keep the peace. I, I don't know. I just, I just dig that. And of course this is a, a movie about how we keep the deal going. Whereas cabin in the woods, spoiler alert may not be about that kind of story. Well, because they, a decision was made in that story. That's different than this one. But right. it was a, that's what I, that's exactly the movie I was thinking about when I saw this, which is the same idea. Y you satisfy these people so that they don't come up and destroy us. And Cabin right. in the Woods was much more clear about it, obviously. But um, well, I would I, say that this movie is more clear about it than the actual short story. Maybe because oh, yeah, right. there's that, there's that explicit line that the the driver says, which does not appear in the short story. Right. Well, also yeah, I read thing about keeping a balance exactly. Yeah. And I read something where Leon became part of it is you become so freaked out, like the the, the images that they're giving you to turn you into what you become is you become a complete follower. And the other thing is he, he became a lover of New York City. Like, New York City is the greatest place in the world. Well, that's so he, what it is in the, the story. He, he, right. What is he, he calls it, like, the uh, the place of pleasure or something like that. I can't yeah. remember the actual, so. exact term. But, but. That's the whole thing I was mentioning before is, is this Lovecraftian monster that when these these creatures take Leon's character in the story, he's they keep referring to him as the Jew or the Jewish accountant. But the uh, they take him to this like father of fathers or something like that. It's described. Clive Barker writes it as the like, colors that humans can't comprehend and tentacles and teeth and all these things. I don't like my like that, that, literally like I'm seeing something so evil and dark. I'm losing my mind. Right. So that actually to me it's more plausible. I guess in the book that his mind would change when they rip out his tongue and he would go to work for them. In the um, in the in the movie, there's stuff that isn't really explained. Like this guy lives for hundred years or more, but he's also got all these weird scabs on him. And yeah. I kind of thought that was going to be explained more. Like, that was like just he has gag. the same wounds, but he doesn't. Ha I, I don't know. It's weird. I think that was a gag to keep the movie going because it. You have to keep the, the horror fiends interested, and I think that's what that scene was to. That was the purpose. Was oh, to, she goes in there, opens his medicine work, cabinet, yeah. shakes him yeah. a little bit, you know, because he, he's basically what they're talking about is he's picking things off his chest these looks like scabs and he's putting them in jars this 40 jars in the medicine cabinet yeah they don't explain yeah, anything or something, and yeah. that's for the gore fans i mean you know that's what yeah, this is all about gross gag to keep the audience like interested charged up well yeah okay well that's i mean that's also you know this uh, i think this feels like a movie from the director that did it Ry ryuhei kitamura yeah. he's a japanese director um this was i think his first english i want to check out this one this one's yeah. pretty good. Versus that that movie that movie is uh, from 2000. That was his big breakthrough. Um, it was called Versus, and it's basically about a bunch of gangsters that are in conflict and they get uh, lost in the resurrection forest, which turns out to have a lot of people actually get resurrected and, and fight. And it's just sort of lunatic, over the top yakuza movie, samurai movie, c uh, uh, fantasy movie. It's I. I don't. I don't want to play down this director. I, I do like his movies, but it's almost like he's a starter. Um, look at the movies of Takashi Miike, who did um, Audition and stuff like that. Like those movies go way further, way way further. And so yeah. this is this was this was fun, but I, I didn't find any of it unsettling or anything. Yeah. I well, yeah. frankly, you no. Know, like I said, teeth being pulled and fingernails being yanked out, and the woman Ted Ted uh, Ted Demi's wife or girlfriend slips on his eye yeah. slips on his yeah. eyeball and she falls hits her head you know there's a couple a couple squirm inducing moments but i was never like 
even the one we possession, I was more squeamed out and skeeved out in possession than I ever was. And that's just from Dieter, or whoever that guy was, the German. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, he was, what was, his he, name? was uh, he was skeeved me out more Heinrich. than no, Heinrich. Heinrich, Heinrich, anything Heinrich. in this film. Like, I kind of, this to me seemed like a, um, and it's funny because I thought it was after Bradley Cooper had become more famous through Hangover. And I thought, okay, they're just shoving Bradley Cooper in this so more people watch this film. Turns out I was wrong. He just did it before he before he hit it big. And I just I didn't I don't know. I I, I didn't find it that great. Well he's I also think. part of why I saw the movie in the first place, because my wife and I, again, uh we love alias that uh JJ Abrams show. It, yeah. yeah. Just a really fun show. Really just you know, it went up its own butt like Lost and all the other JJ Abrams things do by the end. But it was a lot of fun and Bradley Cooper was Jennifer Garner's character that's this secret undercover spy, was her regular civilian best friend. And he's just really funny and charming and really good and you kind of he's one of those actors that started to come up and you know, he's he's real pretty and everything, but you get the you get the the sense you're like, I am gonna see a lot more of this guy and he's actually really good. No, and I so, like him. Listen. So I yeah, it. so I saw this because you know it looked it looked like it looked like it was going to be the title, so that got my attention. Definitely. And then I was like, oh, there's people in there. There's like real people in this. Vinnie Jones, Bradley Cooper. So I, I enjoyed checking it out. I was a little confused though. It's the midnight me train, but the train always left at two a.m. Uh, it's like right. that kind of thing. I get a little. It really should be the the after midnight me train. I, I think <laughs> exactly. that's totally. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't roll off the tongue. You can't say the two a.m. <laughs> I I got it. I understand. But uh, but that, but well, yeah, yeah I'm getting lost. This reminded but... me of. I'm sure you guys, uh, if you haven't seen this movie, then you you should. But um, under the skin, the, I have um, not seen that one. With that's that with uh, Joe Hansen. Hansen. Yeah, that is an absolutely fantastic movie. It's also an adaptation of a book that is also an excellent book. That's very different. Mm. And the book is much more like this story, and it's about uh, an alien who comes to Earth to. Um, basically collect humans to ship them into space to be delicacies. And it's very explicit about the way that humans are captured and uh, treated and um, fattened up and uh, neutered and all just exactly like beef. I mean, the book is very much against uh, eating meat in a sci-fi genre. And so th it's funny because the, I don't really connect the two movies very much other than that basic concept, but some of the, just the detail uh, put into watching somebody, you know, prepare a body and all that kind of stuff. It was, it reminded me of that, but under the skin is <clears throat> that's, that's really a superior film. Hmm. I, really I think, uh, the, the one thing I wish this film would have done was I wish it would have focused more on the occult aspects instead of doing like the photographer cat and mouse thing. I, I you know, he goes you to the always... library. But you always lean into the occult. You can't. I know. Deal... I, that's, that's, that's what I love. So I, you know, he went to the library instead of finding, oh, there's all these murders that's been happening for a hundred years. Maybe untangle like a weird occult conspiracy, and maybe that way you can connect the ring and the necklace and just give 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 me a little more of that than. Well, just, you would like, think he did that whole scene where he, but he did that whole scene where he shot the um, the model who ends up getting killed and the door gets opened by mahogany and he's got the ring that's how he figures out it's that guy but they never focus on the ring they right. kind of explicitly show her wearing it and you're supposed to pick and I, I i don't know if i would have picked it up if i hadn't read about it on imdb that you know there's a she has the same necklace that he wore i, picked well, it up I mean then. i picked that up but i felt like that was for me as the audience member i mean i think I you think had that, that the purpose was so focused that he wasn't going to see obvious clues about the uh, kind of danger that he was in. So that was for us. Like, and it, it, it does, I guess it doesn't really lean into the occult because there's, there's not actually anything magic. There are monsters, but the conspiracy is people in all different levels uh, are, are, you know, trying to feed these creatures to keep them from bothering the rest of us or something. And that's not necessarily magic. It's more like, it felt more like, um, like secret society. Well, except yeah. that Bradley Cooper was having visions. But he was having nightmares, and I don't know if we're supposed to. That, that's that's one of the things in the movie that doesn't make sense to me, because it, it should be more explicitly about magic and black magic and things like that. If they're feeding his brain, because he's having images of people being butchered on the train, or he's being butchered on the train, and I don't know how much of that he's really imagining or, or whatever. Well, there's that whole scene where he actually saw it. They scratch him up to give the put the logo on his chest, the logo, right. the branding. Yeah. 
the logo. So, the well, I mean, Clive Barker is not a stranger to like magic in his writing. No, no, or, no, okay. not at all. I, I don't know why the movie would shy away from that. I guess. Like I, 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 I want the secret society, the magic, and the just the weird occult shenanigans. Like to me, this. I mean, the butchery is fine, but like, I just want a little more of that, I guess. But you always want that. Yeah. You I always know. want to get back in the deep society, whatever, how they ever got where they are. And deep state. You know. well, the heart wants what the heart wants, okay? That's Don't right. Don't deny it. Well. Now, as, as cultists, you know, remember, I'm cult curious. Hey, um, I'm not a cultist. Jesus. Have, have, okay. you seen well, have you seen this one? Good. <laughs> I have it. I haven't watched it. I have right. the same version you have there. Yeah. I mean that's I mean that's not gore at all, but it does involve magic and a yeah. wizard, let's say, and it, it, it's good for like a mid '90s movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, would you guys rate this? This one is like a. Where is it on the cult scale? How many skulls or how many <laughs> dead eyeballs? Well, I, I don't even know how to rate I mean, these things because I don't want to rate these things. But I, okay, I good. think I mean I think that if I, I have to, let that, me let me just back this up. If I have to yeah, recommend. Okay. A cult film to a non-cult film watcher. I think the ones we've seen, you know, Possession and even the Honey, the what the Devil's Devil Honey. honey. I mm. found those more interesting to recommend to someone than this. This just seems like gore for gore, and it's you know. Well, I think it's closer to a, 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 a mainstream or, thing. I mean, it's a yeah. Hollywood production. It's got you know name actors in it. Yeah, it's got some money behind it. Um, I think also it's it's more of a cult movie. I think that people feel like they've discovered because they screwed it when it came out. Like it really is a movie that people discovered at home. Yeah, it, it, almost nobody saw it in the theater. It was in a hundred theaters. I don't know that I would have gone to see it in the theater. Yeah, it I don't remember feel like it a being theater movie. It. Yeah, yeah, but also it's got honestly it's got a great title, and that title either appeals to you or it doesn't. And if it does. That sounds like you could you could take that title and make a much cheaper, way grosser movie with it. Right. Like it's, it's definitely like the yeah, they one definitely of the problems did. is the CGI. There's too much CGI. That the people who made this had enough money to spend on CGI. Right. So. They slicked it up, no question. And and mm. and that's probably a good thing because if you took someone with less money and more gore, it would have been just, probably it would have been sick as shit. <laughs> Unless it was uh, unless it was a twenty five minute short, like you said, and somebody well, used it. This as belongs in an anthology, right? Like a like a Tales from the Crypt type thing or, or well, Twilight it's, that's Zone. That's the story. Yeah, it's yeah. in Clive Barker's Books of Blood, I guess volume one. I haven't read all of them. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I think it would make a much better version of that and if it they was. They did just release Books of Blood on Hulu, but I watched like twenty minutes of it and I just it didn't interest me. So wow. I can't speak to the actual quality of what they did for that show. Do you think that is this story in that show? I don't think so. Okay. Is that, I mean, it's always interesting to see, like, you know, I've heard that there's more than one version of a Christmas Carol, for example. There's a and bunch of them. It, it turns out that you can do a lot of different stuff with it. So I don't know that this story is, um, is, uh, uh, eternal and universal enough that it needs to be remade every 20 no, years. But, no, but it's, it's funny. Fun. It's funny. You brought up cabin in the woods. Cause that's what I was thinking about, mm-hmm. which is these people who are doing something for horrible people so that they don't horrible creatures or whatever people mm-hmm. older than older than us. Cause that's the whole thing in cabin in the woods. These are people who have been around a long creatures that have been around a long time protecting everybody else from these. You have to make a deal with these people so that, you know, right. everybody else is protected. I think that's Except a pretty decent. You know, that movie shows its hand really early, too. Oh, yeah. You know, there's there's no question as to what... You don't know why, but you know what's happening. Because oh, the way the movie starts with the, the control room behind the scenes yeah. stuff. But that, that movie was just... I mean, I, I just love that movie. I did oh. not know where it was going to go. It was so funny and clever. It was peak Joss Whedon and everything that's good about... Um, the the kinds of stories that he was telling and it was a movie that sat on the shelf for a while so by the time it came out chris hemsworth was already thor and, and yeah, famous no, and all that kind of stuff yeah. and no it, it was just it was just great it was just that's, really satisfying that's that's, that's a, a that's a different order that's a rock solid film for sure yeah so all right listen i um i don't i didn't like this i'm not saying um uh, i'm I, I couldn't watch it i'm glad i saw it i saw it probably 2000 i probably saw it when it came out in 2008 so you said yes. you'd seen it before. Yeah, well, I was interested in Bradley Cooper and what he was doing, and you know, but I don't remember half the scene, so I probably just skimmed through it the last time. And, oh, okay. Uh, and and you know, it's uh, uh, like I said, it's just too long. 
but the title, I mean, how can, like you said, how can you not just appreciate? And if you even look at the poster, what I love about it is, it's that's Helvetica, man. They didn't even go crazy on this poster. It's like simple. Even meat is in red. It's like yeah. that. That appeals to me. That simplicity. Still, the movie wasn't that great. I, I at least the movie delivers on its title. Like totally does. Not one yeah. question. Step yeah, away so from it, the meat, please. Not like they they tr they totally like, you know ripped you off or anything you, not you at all get, you do get some good gags not one bit well i'm enjoying i listen good bad whatever i love the fact that i i'm getting perspective from you guys that that helps me get through these things to be honest well so Uncle now and i want you to have a good time that's right now okay. we're going to try a new little segment okay now that i've done a few of these it's making me interested in other films that i've never wanted to watch so we're going to do a little segment called r and r which is ralph's request Okay. This is Ralph being brave. I'm proud of you. Did I spell request right? That's all I you want. Sure to know. did. Okay, so this is Ralph's request. There's one movie that I have never seen that got. It's an interesting, interesting film, I think, and it's a movie called Crash. Not Ooh. the one that won the Oscar, because that that's it's a whole the real one. I'm talking about the David Cronenberg Crash. Now. I think Uncle Al knows a little bit about this film. I do. It's a good a one. Big, oh, wow, look at that. It just <laughs> happens to have the a... the Arrow 4K edition? 4K. Al, just give me, give our audience and myself just a, just a quick description. I don't want to give too much away because I, I want to walk in fresh, but just a quick description. Uh, Drew, I assume you've seen this as well. Not only have <laughs> I seen this, I actually took a date to it. <laughs> and we had a good time. Now that's brave. That is awesome. <laughs> we had a good time. <laughs> All right, Al, just give me a slight, a quick synopsis, and then we'll move on. I don't even know what to say other than car crashes and orgasms. Oh, would that have been the four words you would have used for this one? That's three. I guess so. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Well, and it's also, it's David Cronenberg directed it. Um, and so he brings the whole David Cronenberg, uh, you know, oeuvre behind him yeah. as far as body Yeah, we went through that. We went through that with his uh, existence, right? The, right. So this like, is the this is three years before existence. It's clearly made by somebody with some of the same obsessions and same... Yes. Uh, I mean, his, Cronenberg's movies have changed over time, but Crash is one of the more Cronenberg, Cronenberg movies. Now, I, I now I, I'm going to tell you what I know about it real quick, and then we can... It's about people obsessed with car crashes, right? And and it's about wounds. people obsessed with car crashes sexually. Ah, well, yeah. okay, that's I guess that would do it. And it's yeah. got Holly Hunter in there, right? James Spader, mm -hmm. um, the woman Elias from the game. Oh, uh, look at that. That's okay. the Criterion Laserdisc edition. Oh, so, so it must be good. Criterion. In that movie. Deborah Kara Unger. Yeah. That scene is not in the movie. It is in the movie. Okay, uh, Deborah Unger. What? That's the woman's name. I think I think I like the idea of Ralph's request because when we talked about this off the air, because sometimes we have to prepare for these things, uh, <laughs> I got the impression that there are some some movies like Crash that you've been interested in, but that really you've been wary of. Right. And I, I, I first of all, I'm proud of you because you're very brave. <laughs> but also some of these movies, like the three we talked about, at least three movies that you said I I, I don't know if I want to see that, and I know it's worth you seeing all three of those movies. Right. And this is one of them. So I think uh, I think I think you're really growing as a as a movie watcher. And well, this it. is the ex listen. Part of it is, it's an ex it's an excuse to watch. Like there, are, like I like you just said, there are films that I have I know about. There's one in particular I'm never going to watch. So guys, I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't ever bring words for, uh, Al. What is it? The um, ask to, ask, ask to mouth. Uh, uh where, you requiem for a dream? No, gee, where's oh, ask oh, to mouth in that one? No, oh, that's, uh, that's, 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 that's human, uh, human centipede, hey, human centipede. centipede. Sorry, not no. not gonna well, happen. Not gonna human happen. Centipede, human centipede isn't a good movie. Human okay. centipede has doesn't matter. A ridiculous, a ridiculous concept. And it has one very funny ridiculous scene. But right. it's it's like if you thought that there was too much time on Midnight Meat Train for that concept. Good God. <laughs> okay, there, but there I'm just saying. Human movies. I could barely sit through one of them. If these four but it words has come Peter up, laser in it. <laughs> yeah. If, if those four words come up and I pick it, I'm not going to do it. Okay. But there are That's there totally are like I was telling you guys. Uh, I think Teeth is one of them. Mm -hmm. Irreversible. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. movies I know about that I was like I'm not going to ever want to watch that. Now this this thing is making me want to watch these, and and I'm I'm learning that you know, not so bad. I'm sure well, I'm when, sure Al's going to bring. Some, 
some that are going to be very bad. But we'll, well, I'll when cross that ready, bridge. I'll cross that bridge. When you're ready bridge. and you consent, you can watch any of these movies that you want. Exactly. It's all about consent. So That's right. All right. Well, that was a good one. Midnight Meat Train. The description, the title says it all. Okay? Sure if anybody does. wants to watch it. So uh, you guys have a good week. I will watch Crash. Uh, can't wait, actually. Good I'm actually, I can't wait. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go back on the four words next, uh, next time. Okay? Sounds good. All right. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. Stay in there. Okay. Bye.